Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. You're watching theCUBE live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is CUBE alum, Link Alander, v Vice Chancellor, College Services, Lone Star College. Welcome back. Good, Good to, to see you again. Here at ServiceNow, we've been to EMC World, VMworld. Uh, what's new, what's up, what's up with you, what's happening? Oh, there, you know, there's so much going on, especially in the educational space. So let me, let me step into Lone Star a little bit first, because you know, when we first talked, I think we were talking about 85,000 students. Now we're supporting over 100,000 students. We're the largest institution of higher education in the Houston area. Fastest growing in the United States, but I got to put it in perspective. In the last three years, we've added 33,000 students. And we're on for a double digit growth again. So, you know, that type of growth presents a lot of challenges, whether it's in the IT or the instructional space or, or facilities as you look at it. So. It, it's been exciting. It hasn't changed any over, over that period That's of time. That's a wave of new, new inbound Absolutely. capabilities. So how did you handle that? Give us some, give us some working examples of what you went through <laughs> emotionally, <laughs> tactically with technology. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a lot of work coming in, right? Well, there's a lot of challenges to it. I mean, you know, you, you can look at it from the IT perspective and the capacity management or the facilities and, and their capability or the ability to bring on, you know, qualified instructors through that process. So the challenges have been continuous, but the, but the reality is we've been in this pattern for so long that we've adapted very well. We're very agile about what we do. The interesting challenge though is uh, this last August, we have a new chancellor on board. So we had a t completely different vision to an extent, but it really isn't now. It, uh, our new chancellor came in from inside, was a president, and he basically did a mission realignment. So we, we pride ourselves in the fact that we want to be a college of choice, that we want to be there for the first time in college student. But now we've actually strengthened our mission around workforce and workforce training programs. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm, I'm really excited because we are now actually becoming an educational partner for ServiceNow. And we're going to be putting students through a training program, but we've also wove it into our converged infrastructure program. So they're learning IT service management, idle foundations, and, they're, and that's embedded in that training So it's like an now. integrated track for them in this new specialized way. We're adding a little ServiceNow component into that bigger picture. It, what we're doing is, in, the, in that program, we're giving them an opportunity is that they learn the fundamentals, but then they get certifications along the sides. So they can actually, in the Converge program, get a certification in EMC and to virtualization. That's interesting. And, I mean, and you're helping build the product well, <laughs> as a CIO. Building product. I mean, it's, it's, it's building <laughs> what I need in my pipeline. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I can't find highly qualified entry-level students that know these items and really around the IT service management side. So, you know, this new vision and this new workforce part has been phenomenal and, it, and it's going to propel our growth. It really will. So let's talk about the role of the CIO. It's something that I know you're passionate about that. Um, some people have said the role of CIO is going away. Some people say it's transforming. The chief digital officer, chief data officer, the COO, on and on and on. Let's talk about the evolving role of the CIO. What's changed in the last 10 years and what's going to change? All right, so let's put this in perspective. Five, 10 years ago, would you have looked to IT to help deliver services? Would you have came to him and said, you know, how can we improve our service delivery? No. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a chance. You know, the business has been really good on the outside edge of the customers or a B2B strategy, but internally, we're no good to each other. Um, internally between whether you're talking HR, you're talking finance, our ability to, to deliver service inside the organization hindered the organization. So now we're in a, we're in a totally different role. Uh, the CIO has to be a business partner and now we're being looked at is how do we expand service delivery? Look at, look what IT did. Over this period of time now, they become a service provider that's trusted. I mean, part of my mission statement in our organization is customer delight. And you know, people first look at it, what do you, what do you mean customer delight? It's customer delight. We have to be aligned with the business. We have to look at how do we support the organization and how do we become a valued partner? And part of that is delight. 
you're happy with what you get from us. Just like when they were talking about Uber earlier, why do you use yeah. Uber instead of a taxi? Well, you get delight, you get, you get what you need, and you get it instant. Instant gratification. You got it. <laughs> and that's what the world's about today, isn't it? <laughs> and well, you pay more for that instant gratification. <laughs> Sometimes you even pay less. True. <laughs> that's you bring up cost, you bring up cost. So delight is the outcome, that's the value, that's the renewal, that's the happiness, that's the checkbox. Uh, and in the, under the covers is the cost to do that. So talk about the efficiency piece of this, because that seems to be what ServiceNow is saying and their messaging is, oh yeah, we automate a bunch of work processes that I say I call mundane. They don't, uh, that's not their word. They've actually used that word, but yeah. say mundane tasks. Um, Non-value producing for sure. Yeah, well, they're in the, machine, they're in the machinery yeah. workflow, but like you just get rid of human involvement, just an easy task. So what's the efficiency angle? What have you seen and how did you? Well, well I, let's start with the first part. So I, I like the idea of get rid of email and you know, I get too many, too many requests in all the time that come in via email, and I'm like, wait a minute, okay, or I lose it. Yeah. It gets lost in the shuffle. Whereas when you're using a service management platform, it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. It stays in the queue until you close it out or you pass it on to somebody else. So changing that workflow around requests and the types of services you provide is efficient. You're getting your work done faster. You're you're not dropping the ball here and there. Mm -hmm. um, it's better than a task list or a sheet of paper, or the post-it note, you know, by far. So that's an important part of that. The efficiencies, though, become, and especially in IT, as as you transform to an organization, it is running a private cloud that's using public cloud services and integrating there. You're looking at that IT infrastructure, that running water, and nobody cares about the running water. They just want to know that I know what I'm doing and I have the right team to keep the water running. Okay, now where's that next little piece? And that next little piece is around how do I provide that level of service that is aligned with the business? And then they want to get to the very top of that pyramid. They want to get down to innovation. What can we do that can help the organization to be innovative? And you think higher education, how can you be innovative in higher education? There's well, thousands of ways. Yeah. And faculty have amazing ideas. So you need to be able to look at what they want to apply in technology in the classroom and how do you deliver that new service and how do you engage with them? So as you look at service man management fundamentals, you're taking care of that base level, that, that core operational need, and then you're constantly just expanding and growing. So that. I want to pick up on that theme of alignment. You were talking about email and, and what a pain it is, and, and you, you gave an example of having a service management system where you can have all those requests you know, documented and, and, and acted upon. But there's a nuance here. You could do a lot of that with a ticketing system, but it's not a whole house solution. It's a bespoke solution. So can you talk about the relationship between a holistic service management approach, maybe it's a single CMDB, maybe it's not, I'd be interested if you're taking that approach, and just sort of bespoke tools, like a ticketing system. <laughs> well, we, we do use it as a c single CMDB, so that, that is one yeah, okay. critical part. The other part of about it is, is that, so I, I actually, in our user group, talked about that this is basically the onion wrapper outside and it wraps around that ERP core service where you have all these core services that you don't get out of your ERP and that you don't want to build or customize in that ERP. We're anti-customization in my organization so that we can be agile. I remember you telling us that before. Oh yeah, right? yeah. so yeah. Now, now I look at this platform as a platform that allows me to do more automation, uh, to improve processes without causing damage in the ERP and being a single source of record. You know, so this is the sole source of truth. And so, well, geez, about four years ago, we actually did student financial aid as a service inside of ServiceNow before they were even thinking outside of ServiceNow. We knew that the students needed to get quality responses, we needed to track what was happening, and so we just applied IT principles and built out an instance that supported financial aid. So people that say, how would you say to people that say, and we've had people do, you know, we've been at conferences, people say the CIO role is going away. It's, CIO is going to have to make a choice, have to become the chief digital officer, chief data officer, the COO, or the CTO, make Wait, a choice. You forgot the chief innovation officer also. Oh, I forgot okay, that. You yeah, forgot right. that one. <laughs> so if I'm inferring what you're saying, you're saying, no, no, the CIO role is going to transform to a service management, you know, guru or enabler, a business person essentially, but can you elaborate on that? Well, for one, you're, you're going to see that. They're going to have to be a business person. They're going to have to be in that alignment. Uh, so as we talk about changing role, I found it interesting. We started about it earlier. I think in 2010, you announced me as the CIO of Lone Star, and I was at that time the CTO. Uh, so <laughs> I found that to be a chuckle, and I thought that would be a good lead into this one because my role did change already. Right. Uh, when this new chancellor came on, uh, we had a lot of discussions around the service delivery and the team and the fundamentals and my role changed significantly in the fact that now I'm actually not just over IT, so I am the CIO, 
but I also oversee analytics and institutional reporting. And when you think about that, that's kind of a big data thing, that's correct. And we're doing predictive analytics and we're modeling in that direction. But it's also about items like, how do I align the analytics to student success? How do I provide faculty with the information that they're looking for and, and feed it through? So it's a totally different than just yeah, so, that's, so this brings up the whole point that Fred was bringing up, which is as you connect devices and da the data, it brings up new capabilities. So what your story is progressing and showing is, you know, Vice Chancellor is a holistic view now that includes not just IT, but the business model of the institution. Well, I didn't get so, to the last one I also took on. So, so I also am over human resources now. Yeah, I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, have you heard that one before? And, and no. <laughs> this that's is the new one. This is the logistics new... coming next? <laughs> facilities? <laughs> no, 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 please. <laughs> CFO? <laughs> no. Get the CFO job, then you can approve all your... Uh, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't think she'd like that either. Uh, there's certain things I don't even have a desire for. But no, but it, that's it, the in reality... the question, though. This is business model impact, right? I mean... Well, it is. It, it, and it comes down to it. How do you get people in the pipeline correctly? And I'm really excited. I've spent a lot of time here. I've got some HR staff here. We're rolling out the HR service delivery model in ServiceNow, and I've got some HR staff here. Uh, ServiceNow was great. When I came in early, we had a chance to sit down with a bunch of CHROs and talk and understand the challenges. We looked at the onboarding application and said, wow, you know, this is this is what we need. We need to, to make employees welcome when they come in. So it really is, if you think about it, this IT is, is in everything. It changes the, you are the instantiation of that, 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 that transformation. I mean, you think about it, when we were talking before, we are talking about you know, server virtualization, you know, storage. Backup and backup. recovery. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking hey, about business transformation. But, but, right? but they're all just as important. I mean, underneath sure, the yeah. hood, that sure. has got to be there. There's an engine in of trouble. innovation. Yeah. I mean, you uh -huh. have to match your services with your target audience, deliver that value, get paid for it. At the end of the day, that's the outcome, and have happy customers. Correct. So. That's an IT function, basically. I well, mean, we're so embedded saying? in everything. So you know, you talk about the Internet of Things. Well, you just think about it. IT permeates the institution. So the the key to that, and one thing we didn't really get into, is that transformation is also it's not just the CIO transforming. You have to transform the IT staff. And what that really means is, you know, I've I've got some phenomenal individuals. We're we're 100% centralized in our organization, which is odd for higher ed. But the reality is, is that we really have focused on a lot of soft skills, on leadership skills, on training, so that the IT staff has that same mindset. And when we talk about goals and objectives, they understand that we are not the mission of the college, we are there to support the mission. And to do that, we need to understand what the business drivers are. Do you feel are. you've been, um, do, you, do you feel that you guys are agile? I mean, that's a term that's been kicked around. That's a goal that people have in, in their transformation. Um, or is I, that over We are extremely agile. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we have the ability to work closely with our partners, our business partners. We can deploy services yeah. quickly, and that comes down to when we went into the private cloud and we looked at how do we become highly available and provide those core services. At the same time is we adopted project man management methodologies that are unique. I have a phenomenal portfolio, by the way, kept in service now, and I'll give them, give them their plug there because I love the product. I mean, every morning when I walk in at seven o'clock, two monitors go on and I see exactly what's going on on my service delivery side and I see what's going on on my portfolio side. I can see if projects are hanging. But that project portfolio was reshuffled and reviewed and adjusted every four months. I don't believe in projects that go over six months. Sometimes I'll have a phase two for a year, <laughs> but that's it. We won't push that because things change too fast. There's other opportunities that may come up and we're not, we're not just being so agile that we have no plan. I have a very clear plan but the plan really comes down to is what are the business needs, how do the partners look at it, and how do we move it forward from there? We had Rob Pickering on yesterday, CIO, and he said his number one value proposition for service now, when he went to the C-suite, was for the first time he could show executives, this is what IT looks like, and actually give a picture to your dashboard question. So, and he now take it to a whole other level. So, in a sense, that's the, your comfort blanket of, of service now gives you that capability. Well, the key to that is transparency. So IT needs to be transparent. Everybody says, oh, IT spends too high. This is going on. You know, we need to control. We need to be a better value partner. But if you're not transparent and they can't see that, then the questions do arise. We have large budgets. We're, we have huge operational expenses. And we can quantify those by looking at the analytics. Well, it's, you know, it's so true. Like, because if you look at technology, technology, we're always doing more with less. Our budgets don't go up. Maybe you do because you're growing. But what other part, department does more with, with less? But the problem has been, I don't know what's in there. It's like I just get this big IT tax, you know, every month on my P&L. 
You know, but when you, you know, when you look at the budget, you go, yep. there's no more money left over. It's not like we're having big parties here. We're not throwing big marketing yep. events. Yep. Right? <laughs> we're picking up all the pieces and trying to make it work. So that transparency is key. Now, you, you, so you, did you start with ITSM and then part of that was project, so you moved into project and HR is facilities next. Maybe talk about that journey. Okay, so the journey as I see it right now, we, we actually started in ITSM in 2009 with ServiceNow. Okay. So we've been there for a long time and we are constantly looking at new ways to improve services and add, you know, inter and turn on other modules, I guess is the better way to put it, uh, as we move forward. When Project came out the first time, it wasn't ready for prime time, so we stayed on our Project servers, and I, I had disparate Project information, so I didn't have that transparency. When the next generation was released, it was like, this is exactly what we need. You know, we, across the organization, adopt one platform, one view, gave me that capability. So true portfolio view. Absolutely. Interconnected, aligned with the other I can, processes. I can sit down with any of my business units and show them a CIO roadmap that's related to their area mm -hmm. and to the institution as a whole. So they're able to see what I have on the roadmap and where things are going. Right now we've uh, rolled asset in, we're rolling the finances in. I've been very good about the finances always. It always comes down to can I be transparent yeah. about the dollars. But now I have a dashboard view versus a bunch of spreadsheets and we're moving that part in. HR, when HR was discussed a couple different times as a way to improve that service delivery. Like I said, we'd done quite a few other things. The analytics, before they reported to me, went into request management, started doing that. Financial aid, we'd done that as a service before that. We just applied the ITSM principles to that. Now we're looking at, from the HR perspective, a true case management solution that will help us walk through everything and then, and then follow back through. Well, can we get a call, we can, we can see what's going on exactly. It's something we don't have that, that visibility. Facilities is an interesting one. We're going to, as we, after we roll out HR, we're going to meet with the facilities group and talk to them and say, what do you think here? Because as we talk about the automation, the Internet of Things, you're talking about all of these controls. You know, you talk about Nest in the house. You know, have you ever seen Johnson Controls and what it does in, a, in large building spaces? It's pretty, it's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. So how can you, you know, can you feed that kind of data in there and provide that same service request platform? So we'll look into those directions. There's quite a few different areas we feel that uh, ServiceNow's platform will take care of those items we don't have that aren't available to us. And so, how about developing apps? Are you guys aggressively doing that or, or you know, ServiceNow or not necessarily? Not necessarily. We'll, we'll, we'll do the, the standard service requests. Like I said, I'm an anti-customization yeah, guy. Yeah, so you're looking for cuts. You know, I'm, I'm looking for efficiencies. We roll out the newest releases very quickly yeah. every time. We, we stay on yeah. track. Now, that's a little bit different than this apps development because it's not as complicated. We are going to look yeah. in the store. I'm excited about what I've seen already and just the quick peeks at the store and see what's there. We had, with the training program, we're going to have app developers being trained in our organization now, so that might open some opportunities also. Um, but you want to buy, not build necessarily. Right now, that's just yeah, right. We're not, I yeah. mean, we're an IT support organization. We're yeah. not a software developer. So the question I want to ask you to end the segment here, I know you got to run. Thanks for your time, by the way. You're a great visionary and also a great executive leading the charge. You're showing really where IT, from an executive standpoint, managing that now, it's, every, it's promiscuous across the organization. So that's congratulations to your success. Share with the folks out there, you know, ServiceNow, how has that changed your job, your, your company, and what advice would you give them if someone's kicking the tires for ServiceNow? Obviously their developer community is exploding and getting some great uh, foundational growth and uh, company success has been pretty significant. Well, you, you can't beat rapid deployment in ServiceNow. I mean, we basically turned it on and started running. Um, and then you had a bit of build a strategy around how do I take those idle principles in ITSMF and actually make them functional because as you know they're not exactly functional when you you read the instruction set it's kind of just ideas so you're able to make them functional very quickly so that speed to deployment is phenomenal but really the transformation of the organization comes down to is that transparency again my customers can go see exactly what's going on with a service request. They can see when we have a problem that the problem information's out there and that we're queuing everything up and we're working through this. It's, they're not left in the dark. I mean, we're, my organization's great about communications. We've had communication strategy for a long time. But this is even further because most people don't want to look the for problem. that. You're working the problem. Yeah, they want to they be able to see it. So they yeah. can go into the portal, there it is, what's going on. Uh, they understand better about, especially on the project side now, they, they see not just the projects, but we also align those to our strategy and to the institutional's goals and objectives for strategic planning. So now they can see that I've got this many in the queue that are related to this initiative, this initiative, and this initiative. And, you know. The so ServiceNow kills the, kills the excuses and says, oh, it's in my spam folder. 
Emails, they're going to take but, away emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you, and you could have done that with a project portfolio management system before, but it's in a stovepipe. It's in it doesn't silo. connect to a CMDB, yeah. it doesn't yeah. connect you know, to the, yeah. even though it, they said that did, right? And you could sort of create these sort of scoring things that sort of worked. With a ton of work. I with mean, a ton, a ton of, of work. work. A lot of you know, heavy All lifting right, yeah. to do that. Yeah, great. Link, appreciate your time Good coming story. on theCUBE. Appreciate it, have a good flight home. Appreciate it. Link Allender, Vice President, Vice Chancellor, College Services, here on theCUBE. Oh, CIO. CIO, <laughs> Vice <laughs> we, we screw his title up every time we have him on. CIO, yeah, yeah. CTO, <laughs> we've been there, runs everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be running everything. He's got, all the, he got all the data, he'll be running, he'll be CEO soon. Um, next time on theCUBE. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thanks. We'll be right back after the short it. break.